What's up, YouTube? RC Buster Nut over here with a follow up video after that wonderful crash and the uh, exploding lipo. So I finally got around to looking to see, you know, what the heck happened and let you know pretty much also what got damaged. I mean, considering I was doing 128 miles an hour, brunt of it, this front splitter. I wish I had a nickel for every time I freaking replaced one of those. I'd have enough money to buy a few more. And these two screws off the wing had popped out. So that's why the wing was kind of sideways. And the two little uh, caps, washers that hold the uh, spoiler. Those went gone. A little bit of paint. Paint flaked off after the crash. Same thing with the body. Had a little bit of a... Uh, paint come off there from the body where uh, where it got whacked on that side GRP tire rim got a little scruffed up I mean I checked all the seams the glue everything seems intact so it wasn't a blown tire or the gluing that it came undone as far as for damage that and my custom brace for these carbon fiber wings that I made this side where whacked it got bent a little bit so the wings kind of pointing up I had made these special metal brackets with a three degree angle bend so that I can put this after removing the trays because I removed the stock battery trays and I wanted to put something firm to hold on to these wing I mean this is even after it's bent these things are solid and I had put these spacers here, these plates, I mean, which I put with uh, six standoffs with the sheet metal bracket, and that's screwed with six screws on the bottom, the six screws on the top. I had, just like this guy, I mean, this thing is not budging at all. This thing is in there tight. I had straps just like this with the battery that came loose. And even if you see here, even this strap was ready to give way. I don't know, it was, the impact was just so that hard that it ripped the other two that I had going around. Or, I mean, that's all I can think of. It must have been really, really hard. But other than that, I couldn't see anything else. And so I powered it up here. And what I did notice, I don't know, I think there's something wrong with this tire and it, and it feels a little funny, but let's just, uh, this tire is wobbling like crazy. You know, the accident, at least the front of the accident, happened on this tire back here. And that seems to be opening up a little water. Nothing major. That one seems pretty steady. That's not that bad, but this guy right here, like a drunken sailor. I'm not sure. I looked at the shaft. The shafts are not oscillating. Things are straight. That shaft is nice and straight. The rear shaft, considering that this is the corner over here, that got whacked. That's a uh, dry shaft. Not oscillating. It's going nice and straight. Same thing with this one right here. Nice and straight. Those guys are the 8mm shafts that I have in here. Those are not oscillating, they're nice and straight. The only thing is the tire. The tire is long deep. And of course, this was the side where the car shot off, because the car shot off into that direction after the accident. So.
I don't know. I'm thinking about tearing maybe this whole thing apart. I think I'm finally done with the open frame and I just might go GT. I'm not sure what kind of surprises that's going to bring, riding a GT, but... And I don't know if I want to continue to ride GRPs. I don't know. I've rode foams on this car and I did okay. The only thing I just didn't like about the foams is the fact that A, they're expensive and they didn't seem to last. They would chunk up easily, but they performed. You know, I was able to get good runs on them. Yeah, uh, almost a little bit of paint here on that guy right there, but I was going to paint these two and that wing again because I used a different fluorescent yellow paint and I didn't like how it didn't match. But, I don't know, maybe I think I'm going to just give this whole car a complete tear down and start rebuilding some stuff and checking everything for wear and tear and put it back together and see what it takes to swap from this type of body to uh, like a Delta Plastic GT body. I'm going to have to look into that to see what I have to get so that I can put that frame on the new, uh, the new body. And I'm even thinking of maybe getting rid of this receiver box, seeing if I can even take this servo and use a hot racing mount and mount it sideways over here so that I can take this ESC and push it forward. And hopefully that'll give me a little bit more room. The reason I even made these plates and got rid of the stock battery trays was because with the with these batteries they're so huge. It was starting to, it was coming right over this and this A-arm didn't have too much room to go up and down. So that's why I made these custom plates and that's why I had one of them making these plates because I got rid of all the battery trays and the battery trays used to hold the side skirts and because this has a three degree bend I couldn't just use a flat piece of steel to extend these. But that's what uh, that's where we're at with this guy um even, even debating maybe even selling this car and getting a bow because i've done so many freaking runs with this that i didn't even think this would perform well as a speed run car and i've gotten this puppy up to 128 miles an hour and she goes straight as a bullet every freaking pass the one time i flipped her was because i forgot about the uh the road has like a 10 12 inch at the same road that I was racing this guy at at the very end of the road there's a big strip where they reworked the road they must have dug it up and then repaved it but it's a little bit of a dip in that area where they repaved the whole line so I forgot and when I noticed I was too late I was going too fast so the car went over and took off and flipped but even though it flipped and landed on the grass on the ground, I don't think I broke anything. It was still okay. And I think that was like at 123, 124 miles. I can't remember. It was fast. <laughs> and here's the new thing I got for her now. Finally going to go ahead and I bit the bullet. And I got the uh, gearing for the diffs so that I can bring it to a 2.8 and ran the numbers for the 40 tooth spur and the 34 tooth pinion and I believe with these it was going to be pushing just over 140 at 75% efficiency so I'm going to redo this guy and I'm going to do a 4S pass first which I think the calculator said was going to be about 94, 96 miles an hour we'll see what we get on 4S since I'm gearing up it's sort of with these guys I want to make sure that we're good on 4S before I go ahead and do a pass on 6S so that's that's where we're at guys so it might be a little bit before I get another run in I don't know if, I, if I'm going to be able to get her ready by this week I'm going to try and hopefully maybe I can get another run on a Sunday I do have to find a better road though alright guys hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and the week God bless. Ciao.